sculpting with Ken Boberg. <laughs> Thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for letting me in. <laughs> oh, I love it. Eh? Fellow sculptor, eh? fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a little journeyman sculptor, but uh, it's it's quite an honor to be here in uh, your studio. Um, the foundry's not here in, in, in your studio, but um, this is where you set up all of your, your study pieces, the miniatures, um, a lot of the wax, working on wax pieces, and you've got these awesome monuments that are in clay form right now. Um, what, what's this piece right here, this huge eagle? This is my most recent piece, and it's going to Houston, mm -hmm. to the Federal Reserve Bank. And of course, as a Swedish immigrant, and a, and, a, and a new citizen, really, in this country, it's a great honor to do the piece for the federal government, you know? And also, the architect for this job is Michael Graves, which is an architect I've admired since, since art school days. He actually put figurative sculpture back in, in architecture, and I've always wanted to work with him, so I was very honored to get to do this piece. Yeah, um, how do you start something like this, because it's so big? First it starts as an ID, and uh, and very often, you know, I just do a little drawing, quick drawing. Uh, then I build a little little model, little s sketch model. I like to sketch in three dimensions, you know. You cannot really do it with drawing. I draw in clay, so to speak, you know. So I make a little sketch model. In this case, it was a competition. So it was a lot of artists uh, trying for this job. I think we were down to finally four finalists, and we created models. And so I, I did, in fact, I got one here. Uh, um, this is the first sketch model here for the piece. I don't know if you can see it, but, you know, this is the little one here. And Michael Graves designed, this is the entrance to the building you walk right through, a bronze turnstile. And it's got to do with security. Then it's a long corridor, and then you get to the building. I mean, they're holding billions of dollars in this building, yeah. you know. So this here is 18 foot tall, and so the sculpture is sitting on top of it. So this was my sketch model that I took down to Houston to the Federal Reserve, and they approved. Then, when that was approved, I make a work, what I call a working model. And this one here, I work out all the details exactly the way I want it. And that becomes then my guide for the final, for the big one. And uh, it takes, you know, it can take up to six months to do the, just work the clay. What, what's Sometimes a year. What's underneath the clay? It's steel. First, you know, we have steel supports. And uh, on top of that, what, we, what we've done before, we spray urethane foam, mm -hmm. and then we carve that to take up some of the bulk, because clay is so heavy. So, in this case, we went to really great detail with the foam, you know, so that we didn't have to put so much clay on it. And it's recyclable, you know. This clay has already been many different animals. <laughs> I wish I could just, uh, the, maybe the clay has memory. You know, finally one day I'm going to tell it, be buffalo or something. <laughs> yeah. It's art and labor, you know. And it's hard work. I mean, you have to be physically fit, you know. Climbing up and down, putting on tons of clay, you know. I'm going to be 60 this year, so, you know, <laughs> I feel it. And, uh, but, you know, there is something really neat about sculpture, and certainly on this scale. And that is like, you know, you feel that you're not a pansy artist, you know. You feel you're doing an honest day work. You're actually doing some labor. And it, it fits my Lutheran work ethic, having grown up in Sweden in a fishing village, you know. I was taught that uh, people have to do an honest day work, and so I can do art and, and still be tired at night. <laughs>
did you get started in this whole monument business? Because, um, you know, we're surrounded by so many different monuments. You know, what was your first monument? Well, you know, first of all, having grown up in Europe, uh, my hometown and most towns in Europe, you know, it's a lot older than the United States. And, and most towns have a lot of public sculptures. In my town, there is one at, at every square. There is something. And they become part of people's consciousness. You know, there's a huge sculpture of the founder of the city on horseback, King uh, Gustav II, you know, for example. And, and it becomes a meeting place, and they have nicknames for them. You know, that one particularly is called the Copper Mare, you know, like a female. And it is no doubt that it's a stallion when you're standing underneath, you know. <laughs> but it's just people, so we meet you there. It becomes a student yeah. meeting place, so it's part of your consciousness. But, of course, the first one is always the hardest to get. You know, you try to tell a city that you can do it when you haven't done it. You yeah. know. Where was your, where did your first one go in? It went in Dallas, and it was 1979. And it, 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 it accomplished many things. It was very interesting, actually, because it was a very modern building, the Dallas look. And so it was high-tech facade, stainless steel facade. And the owners, they wanted a realistic piece. They wanted the American Eagle. And the, the architect said, no. We need an abstract to go with this modern architecture. And I was called in, and uh, I did a highly stylized eagle with the wings closed. And then I talked to the foundry here, which is, had a very brilliant foundry man. And, and I asked him, could be casted in stainless steel? And it has never been done, you know, a, a lost wax casting in stainless steel. But we managed to pull it off. And in doing that, we actually managed to bridge the gap between modern architecture and realism. This, this beautiful eagle here, um, he's been working on the, the bronze, bronzing of this over the last few weeks or a few months because I saw wing feathers and pieces all, all around your studio here. And we're going to get to to see your, you and your people at work because I know you have a, quite a few people here that help weld all these things together because, it, I mean, it's impossible to, to hit every aspect. Of, of a piece of art like this on your own. So that'll be really neat to have, a, have you take us through all the different parts. But before that happens, I've been chomping at the bit to talk about this huge bison right here. Um, in Omaha last week, I, I got to see a couple of the buffaloes that were next to the, um, the geese in the fountain there. What, what, what's, uh, there's a whole bunch of buffalo in here too, so you're getting ready to do something on a really you're making something that's really huge and grand, you know, to a spectacular level, which I don't think there's any monuments anywhere in the country that even come close to, to the grandeur. There's another sculpture site that's going to have a wagon train. 